hemorrhoids are the fourth leading gastrointestinal complaint in clinics in the US, accounting up to 10 million new self-reported cases per year. Although it has a low morbidity, it can have a big impact on quality of life. In this video, we will go over the anatomy, presentation, and management of hemorrhoid disease. Welcome everybody, this is Dr. Valentin here at Houston Metropolitan Medical. Hemorrhoids are actually cushions of submucosal tissue containing venules, arterioles, and smooth muscle fibers that are located in the anal canal. These hemorrhoids or uh, these hemorrhoidal cushions are located on the left lateral side, one on the right anterior position, and one on the right posterior position. And hemorrhoids are part of the continence mechanism and aid in the closure of your anal canal at rest. So they are only treated if they become symptomatic. Risk factors for hemorrhoids are excessive straining like with constipation, increased abdominal pressure like with heavy lifting, prolonged sitting, chronic cough, and pregnancy. Hard stools increase venous engorgement of the hemorrhoidal plexus and causes prolapse of the hemorrhoidal tissue. When this happens, bleeding, thrombosis, and symptomatic hemorrhoid prolapse may occur. There are internal and external hemorrhoids. External hemorrhoids are located after the dentate line and are covered by anoderm, which has sensation. Because of this, thrombosis of an external hemorrhoid is very painful. For this very reason, external hemorrhoids are not treated without adequate anesthesia. Skin tags in the anus are fibrotic skin persisting after a thrombosed external hemorrhoid. Both external hemorrhoids and skin tags are only treated for symptomatic relief. Internal hemorrhoids, on the other hand, are located before the dentate line and are covered by the anorectal mucosa that has no sensation. Internal hemorrhoids may prolapse and bleed, but rarely become painful unless they become thrombosed or they develop necrosis. Internal hemorrhoids are graded on the degree of prolapse. For example, first degree uh, bulge into the anal canal, second degree prolapse through the anus, but they reduce spontaneously or by themselves, third degree prolapse through the anus as do second degree, but require manual reduction, and fourth degree cannot be reduced. So during your office visit uh, with your doctor, uh, we'll ask if you have any anorectal pain, any rectal bleeding, and if you suffer from constipation. If you present with anorectal pain, most of the time it's due to an anal fissure, uh, which is a little tear in, in the anus, or with perirectal abscess or infection, or fistula, or a thrombosed hemorrhoid. And physical exam can generally distinguish between these conditions. Hematochesia, or bright red blood in the stool, is usually caused by hemorrhoids or a fissure which is a small tear in the anus. Sharp, knife-like pain with rectal bleeding during a bowel movement suggests an anal fissure. Painless bleeding with bowel movement is more suggestive of an internal hemorrhoid. Any patient with rectal bleeding without pain and an obvious fissure should undergo anoscopy or proctoscopy since anoscopy or proctoscopy can identify hemorrhoidal bleeding. And if this fails uh, to find a bleeding source, then a colonoscopy should be done. Occult blood loss may present with iron deficiency anemia on lab work. And unexplained iron deficiency anemia is an indication for a colonoscopy since it could be from a hemorrhoid, you know, this bleeding or blood loss could be from a hemorrhoid, a polyp, or even up to colon cancer. So treatment for hemorrhoid is divided into non-op treatment and surgical treatment. We start with non-op treatment. Bleeding from first and second degree hemorrhoids improve in about 50% of patients with just increasing uh, dietary fiber supplements. Stool softeners increase fluid and avoiding of straining also help with prolapse. It is recommended an additional seven to 20 grams of fiber supplementation per day. And you can get them in cereals, increasing vegetable intake, or even fiber gummies. But fiber only helps with bleeding. For other symptoms, uh, then you might use topical creams with hydrocortisone, benzocaine, lidocaine, which can help reduce pain, itching, and swelling. Witch hazel has also been used and can be used topically for hemorrhoids, and it can help reduce inflammation, 
swelling, and irritation. Avoiding sitting for a prolonged period of time when you're in the toilet also helps reduce prolapse and hemorrhoids. If bleeding or prolapse persist, we proceed with another procedure called rubber band ligation. If first, second, and some third degree hemorrhoids continue to bleed, despite increasing fiber and increasing fluid intake, then we might do this rubber band ligation. This causes strangulation of the tissue causing scarring and prevents further bleeding and prolapse. This procedure is painless. If you develop pain during banding, it might have been placed after that dentate line that has sensation uh, where the nerves are located and the band is removed and replaced. Other complications besides pain are urinary retention in about 1% of patients um, with also infection and bleeding. Severe pain, fever, and urinary retention are signs of infection and should seek medical attention as soon as possible. Bleeding may also occur a week after ligation at the time where the ligated mucosa uh, necrosis and sloughs off. And this bleeding is usually self-limited, so if, if it persists, seek medical attention. Rubber band ligation is contraindicated in patients with anti who are taking anticoagulants or have any type of bleeding disorder. Another option that we have in hand is sclerotherapy, uh, which can also be used to treat hemorrhoids. This is currently recommended as a treatment option for first and second degree hemorrhoids. The sclerosing agent usually causes fibrosis and obliteration of the hemorrhoid. If non-surgical treatments fail, or you have high-grade symptomatic hemorrhoids, or hemorrhoids with complications such as strangulation uh, and thrombosis, surgical intervention is the next step and we would refer you to a general surgeon for an evaluation for hemorrhoidectomy. So we have gone over the anatomy, presentation, and treatment options of hemorrhoid disease. If you've liked this video, please like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to stay up to date with our most recent videos. If you are suffering from epigastric pain or right upper quadrant pain, or would like to know or, and learn about gallstones, I would recommend watching this video here. Thank you for watching and until next time.